In order for a muscle to contract, it has to get a signal from the nervous system. So all of your muscles that make up skeletal muscle, the ones that we're learning in lab class, they all have to have a signal from the nervous system. And this signal is called an action potential. And an action potential is sometimes referred to as a uh, nerve impulse, right? So if we look at this, uh, this is um, PowerPoint slide number 17. We'll see that we have an action potential. You can think of an action potential as just a nerve signal, except action potentials also spread through muscle. So really, we can't call them nerve signals or nerve impulses because they're more than that. They travel through the nerves and they travel through the uh, muscle. Now, I want to first go over what an action potential does and how it works, and then we're going to tie it into the um, sarcomeres and the muscle, and I'll show you exactly how an action potential signals those sarcomeres to contract and cause your muscles to shorten. So in order to do this, let's go to our uh, handout 10D and let's get a look at this to start with. Now I'm gonna cover stuff up really quick here because I wanna just follow I call this my circle diagram, but I really only want to cover one thing at a time so that you understand what's going on. So an action potential involves moving electricity through a cell. Now, imagine that this circle in the upper left corner of our circle diagram, handout 10D, is a cell. The way that we get electricity to move through the cell is through ions, these charged atoms. So if you look at this, we've got potassium ions on the inside of the cell, and we have sodium ions on the outside of the cell. Now what we do is we build up a concentration of these ions until we reach something called a resting potential. Now, all cells have a resting potential, but nerve cells and muscle cells are kind of unique because we can reach this resting potential and build up a charge to move electricity. So what a nerve or muscle cell is going to do is it's going to distribute its sodium outside the cell, its potassium inside the cell, and it's going to build up a positive charge outside the cell and the cell itself is going to be a negative charge. It's going to reach a charge of negative 90 millivolts. That's what we call this resting potential. Now what's going to happen is we are going to move electricity through this cell by allowing these ions to move in and out of the cell. And this is going to happen due to some stimulus. So we're going to stimulate the cell to open its sodium channels. And the, the way we do this is usually through a neurotransmitter. So a neurotransmitter is going to come along and what it's going to do is it's going to jump on sodium channel proteins that are on the membrane of the cell and open up these sodium channels. Now, when we open sodium channels up, the sodium channels allow the sodium to rush into the cell. So this neurotransmitter is a key that opens up sodium channels. These sodium channels open, sodium rushes in. Now, when we have all of these positive sodium 
ions rushing in, the cell is going to turn from a negative charge to a positive charge. It's going to go from a negative 90 millivolt charge to a positive 20 millivolt charge. This process is called depolarization. And what depolarization does is it, when all that sodium rushes into the cell, it kicks electricity through the cell. And you actually have a burst of electricity moving through the cell as these positive ions are being moved from one place to another. So we actually just kicked electricity through the cell during depolarization. And that's how we move electricity in our cells. Our nerve cells do this and our muscle cells do this. Both do this process. Now, the rest of the chart is just resetting this so that we can do it over and over again. So after depolarization, what happens is the sodium becomes trapped in the cell the electricity triggers potassium channels to open. So we also have these potassium channels and those potassium channels open and the potassium rushes out. Now what this is going to do is it's going to change the charge from positive back to being negative. So we call this repolarization. Repolarization, we go from being positive in the cell back to being negative. We repolarize it. We're going we're gonna to regain our resting membrane potential of negative 90 millivolts. But you see, what happens is with the sodium being trapped and the potassium leaving, is we end up getting a cell that has these ions switched. The ions are now backwards, all right? So we've now, we've got this charge we want, but the sodium's on the inside, the potassium's on the outside. So what we have to do is we have to pump the sodium out of the cell and the potassium back into the cell. This involves what we call a sodium-potassium pump. And the sodium potassium pump, it says it pumps sodium and potassium back to the correct area so that we can go back to having potassium inside the cell and sodium outside the cell. Now, here's the deal with the sodium potassium pump. It's pretty interesting. This requires energy. So we're burning ATPs. We are burning ATPs to pump the sodium into the cell and the potassium, or I'm sorry, the uh, sodium out of the cell and the potassium back into the cell. It requires energy. Get this though, it takes 30% of all your energy to do this. So 30% of all the energy your body makes goes just to reset this action potential and move the sodium potassium in and out of the cell back to where they're supposed to be. Now, I mean, this is why you can lay around all weekend and still get hungry because your body is burning 30% of its ATP just to do this. And your muscles and your nerves have to do this constantly. All right. So I'm going to zoom up here to try and get the bulk of this in our um, view here. So Every time we need to move electricity through our nervous system or our muscles, we're going to have to complete this, all right? And this is happening really fast. You know, a nerve signal, it seems like it's a continuous thing. You know, to move your muscles, it's a nice flowing, continuous process. What you're doing is you're going through this cycle over and over and over over again really fast. So we're going to have depolarization, kicks electricity through the cell. Then we have to repolarize it, regain our resting potential, 
pump the sodium potassium back to where it needs to go and then we can depolarize it again so what we're doing is each time this happens we kick electricity kick electricity kick electricity kick electricity through the nerve or through the muscle it's just happening very 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 fast you can compare this to like an old time movie uh, reel where the film reel has individual pictures, right? And you can see when you stop the film, you can see the individual pictures. But when you're playing the film, it's, it's playing so fast that each frame is going by so quickly. It seems like a continuous process. And that's what action potentials do. They are, we're shooting these action potentials through the cell so quickly it seems like it's a continuous process, but we have to we have to do this circle diagram over and over and over again in order to allow electricity to flow. So what's going to happen? Electricity is going to flow from your nervous system down to the muscle and then through the muscle to tell those sarcomeres to shorten. And that's how we get the, um, that's how we get the electricity to move and our muscles to contract. Now, if we look at this action potential, we have two types of sodium channels, right? We have these sodium channels that are ligand gated. They have a key that a neurotransmitter has to unlock correct? So when you think about this, the sodium channels have a key. They're ligand gated. They have a gate and a door that's locked. This neurotransmitter protein key has to unlock it so that the sodium can rush in. So that is the first part of this um, handout. And then we've got the second part says our potassium channels are voltage gated. They open due to a charge. And so what happens is that when this sodium rushes in, it sends electricity through the cell. That electricity moving through the cell zaps the potassium channels open. And then these potassium channels open because they're voltage gated and the potassium leaves that causes repolarization so uh, when you look at the way that this action potential is working it's the same in the nervous system and in the muscular system when we get to chapter 12 here in a week or so you're going to see this again, and it's not going to be any different. We're going to have the same exact action potential, and the same process is going to occur. Now, if you notice, in the middle of my circle diagram, I just have this graph. This is like a classic graph of a uh, action potential. So I'm just going to zoom into it. All it's showing us is the voltage. So we start with a negative 90 resting potential voltage and that voltage is going to become positive until we reach a threshold. And action potentials are all or nothing. They either happen or they don't. They're not going to happen under this threshold. Once we reach the threshold, boom, we have depolarization and we jump up to a positive 20. And then the rest of the process is resetting this back to a negative 90 so that we can do the whole process over again. Okay, so that takes care of handout 10D and action potential. So we're going to keep mentioning these as we go on throughout the rest of this chapter, but you kind of have the nuts and bolts of how an action potential works. All right.